Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast, where we explore the mindset, skill set, and habit set of leadership communication. Using these tips, techniques, and tactics, you'll be able to talk like a leader to build better relationships and get more done. Your host is Guy Harris, who has more than 20 years of combined professional and military experience in consulting, coaching, and training in areas like team and interaction dynamics, communication strategies and tactics, as well as emotional intelligence. Take it away, Guy. Hi, this is Guy Harris. Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast. I am privileged and excited to have my friend, colleague, J.J. Brun. J.J. is in Canada. He's a former Canadian Forces person who served in Bosnia. And from that service, he's now known as the Retired Spy. He's the president of DHC Training Solutions. And DHC Training Solutions is a global leader in communication and relationship development. I've had the privilege and honor to work with JJ now for several years. And I am pleased to have him share his experiences with you today. So uh, welcome JJ to the podcast. Thank you, Guy. Good to be here. So tell me a little bit real quickly, DHC Training Solutions. DHC has a meaning. What, what does that mean? Uh, yes. So being in the military, we always have acronyms. Yep. So the DHC stands for Decoding Human Capital. Uh, it's been my experience um, working overseas, working in a, in a global um, arena or theater of operations, or the VBR military terminology that uh, we used to use. Uh, everyone that you meet has a human capital inside of them waiting to be discovered. Mm-hmm. So to avoid labeling, characterizing, and pigeonholing people, it's looking at people as having a human capital waiting to be discovered. So DHC Training Solutions provides that avenue for them, for us to engage into a uh, sincere, honest conversation uh, so that we can celebrate people's differences versus tolerate people's differences uh, in 2020. And that's a great setup for the question that we want to talk about because I really respect and value JJ's perspective here. He's got lots and lots of experience in this arena, helping people in all different types and sizes of organizations become more effective and more clear communicators. So I'll just pose the question when, you know, the the topic of this podcast is talk like a leader. And I, I just want to get, what is your thought or perspective or what do you hear when you hear that phrase, talk like a leader? It, it's, it's a thought provoking question. Talk like a leader. I had to take a step back and, and reflect on well, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Yeah. Uh, and then for me is uh, authenticity. As in authenticity. you have to be authentic to yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we hear the terminology leader. Yes. You know, when in high school, uh, mm-hmm. after high school, whether it's in uh, college, university, uh, in my case, uh, in the military, um, and we hear people, oh, this, that's a leader, and he's a leader of this, and he's a leader of right. that. And quite often, it's, it's a title that they have. And because okay. they have a title, they have leadership. Mm-hmm. And it hasn't been my experience. I've learned more from people showing poor leadership skills, mm-hmm. uh, which then indicated to me, well, here's how not to do. When okay. I'm in that position, here's how not to lead. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't lead by minimizing everybody just to edify your position. And I was subject to that early in my, in my career yeah, in the military. What has really helped me to hone into uh, talk like a leader is self-awareness. It's it's really to be authentic. uh, You really have to have a strong sense of self. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been my experience that there's four levels of awareness in order to thrive uh, and and in any environment that you're going to be in. there's, There's four levels of awareness. We are like the first one will be the environmental awareness. So mm-hmm. I would define an environmental awareness as a moment in time where you discover or you learn something new. So we're, we're both military mm-hmm. uh, background. Uh, I've learned things that I didn't know uh, when I first came in. 
you know, whether it's boot camp, whether it's uh, oh, yeah. uh, infantry school, whether it's uh, uh, spy school, uh, right? That's environmental awareness. It's a moment in time when you learn or discover something new. Mm -hmm. Now you know you are in that environment when you start asking yourself questions like, "What is this all about? Uh, who's going to be there? How am I supposed to uh, uh, pass?" Uh, mm -hmm. Why are we doing these things? Like, you know, you are in environmental awareness when you're asking yourself these questions. From that spot, you're going to move on to the next level, and that's situational awareness. That is where I would define a moment in time when you apply something that you've learned. Mm -hmm. So, as an example, going to Bosnia Herzegovina. So, I was to be selected, uh, or actually, I was volunteered uh, <laughs> to be a contact handler. Right, an okay. all-expense day trip to Bosnia. So a contact handler is a person who is sent into a hostile environment where he or she has to cultivate sources within that hostile environment, determine their intentions, and modify their behaviors if and when required, you know, without mm -hmm. using any Jedi mind tricks. So that's a, that's a different environment. So I had right. to go to spy school in the UK to learn to be a contact handler. Once spy school was done, the next day, I was, in, I was deployed to Bosnia-Herzegovina. It took me three days to finish where I was supposed to work. And now that I was in this, this area, which is Mostar, which is where I work, so it's about four hours uh, south of Sarajevo, if you know where uh, Sarajevo is, um, now I have an opportunity to apply what I've learned. That's situational awareness. Mm -hmm. And now you know that you are in situational awareness when you're asking yourselves similar questions in regards to uh, what am I supposed to do you know, not to get fired? Mm -hmm. uh, who am I going to be working with? Uh, mm -hmm. How are we supposed to move around without being shot? Mm -hmm. uh, why do I not have more bullets? Uh, because <laughs> when, I was, when I came into theater, they gave me a pistol and 10 bullets. That's it. But the funny oh, part is that they gave me two magazines for my pistol. Each <laughs> magazine can hold 10 bullets. And my brain goes, Shouldn't I get 20 bullets? <laughs> so but that's the situation. You're on-site situational awareness. Now, the key here is that you, to move to the next level, you have to have self-awareness. And, and I would define that as the moment in time where you know that you know that you know mm -hmm. your strengths and, and your weaknesses, your blind spots so that you can partner with somebody that can cover your blind spots. So that whole self-awareness is where you can really thrive in being an authentic leader, not mm -hmm. trying to be one that tends to lead in a very directive way or mm -hmm. you want to lead in, in an inspirational way. Are you looking to lead in a supportive way? Are you leading to wanting to lead in a cautious way? Um, I have my own style and for me, to talk like a leader is just to be me under be control. Okay. So I've learned that for myself, it's never what I say, it's how I say things. I can still be direct. I'm very direct in my uh, style of communicating. Um, I'm very cautious also in the words that I choose to use. And to be really effective, I have to, to be under control, under stress mm -hmm. and duress. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not as effective as mm -hmm. I could be. But, you know, if you think about, in order to talk like a leader, you also have to also be able to decode for a person's preferred communication style. Mm -hmm. Because I may look at someone and sense that I need to approach this in a different way. A leader is one that recognizes the environment that he or she is in and adapts to their styles based on who's in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, I've once heard a person indicate or shared with me that a leader is not one who looks behind to see who's following them. A leader is one who knows who they are following as they move ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, what a nice one liner, what a nice little lingo. And I would advocate that a leader is one that recognizes the environment they're in and adapts his or her leadership style to that environment. That sometimes you have to be direct, sometimes you have to inspire others, sometimes you have to soften it up a little bit and slow down and be supportive and sometimes you do have to be very very cautious calculating conscientious with the words that you choose to use 
in order not to hurt anybody uh, moving forward. Now, I said there was four, and if you're counting, that from self-awareness, it will be the opportunity for you to move to the next level of awareness, which is legacy awareness. Legacy awareness I define as um, a moment in time when you find your purpose, when you find your meaning, when you're able to leave your mark. Mm -hmm. that when you look back that you've done everything that you could have done and that you have thrived right uh you're familiar with the, the parable of the pencil guy yes i am parable of the pencil yeah the leaving a mark idea yes so legacy is very much like that because i think everyone at one point whether it's in high school uh, or just before or college or university uh there's going to come a time in life that people are going to ask why am i here right there's there's an author that wrote the, that the, most, the two most important dates in our lives. Number one, the day that we were born, and two, the day we find out why. Mm -hmm. And that's profound, the day you find out why. Uh, and I would say, like, talk like a leader is when you find your why, when you find your authentic self, I believe that it, life becomes easier. You're not trying to be someone that you're not designed to be, and then you can be yourself and make an impact and a difference uh, on people. Like the parable of the pencil talks about the five things quickly with your audience. Uh, the, uh, the creator, the manufacturer, the inventor of the pencil shares with the pencil that there's five things that you must learn and never forget to be the best pencil. Number one, before you can be usable as a pencil, you must first be willing to be placed into somebody else's hand. That's step number one. Number two, you're going to go through some sharpening as a pencil. It's going to hurt you. Let me encourage you. You're going to be better because of the sharpening. Mm -hmm. Number three, you're going to make mistakes as a pencil. I know. That's why I placed an eraser on the top. Number four, your true core value is not what's on the outside. It's not your looks, not your shapes, not your color. It's what I place inside of you. That's where you find the real core value. And number five, and the most important, you created design and invented for one thing and one thing only. And that's to leave your mark on every surface you come across in life. To me, that's the legacy awareness. Mm -hmm. That's the legacy awareness that you leave to your kids. And if you're fortunate, like in your case, grandkids, you have yep. a chance to start over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try, to, try to fix some of the things I messed up the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm not there. I've got two, two, two kids, and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to start over. <laughs> Even grandkids. So, well, wait, wait, get married first. You know, follow the procedures. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, but that's that's how I would define it. Uh, talk like a leader. It really is is finding your authentic self. The authentic. Like you've never taken an opportunity to take a, an audit of uh, your likes and your dislikes, uh, uh, your temperament style. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of value of going through these uh, psychometric assessment uh, and then receiving it, right? There's, yeah. there's one thing of you could resist all the information or you can receive the information mm -hmm. and then just be your best self uh, moving forward. Not, not being too hard on, your, on, on, on yourself in regards to, your past does not dictate your future. Your past does prepare you for your future. It doesn't dictate, right? It's not because you, you acted a certain way back then in high school that has defined you for the rest of your life, uh, but it does prepare you. So yeah, there's just a lot. Uh, that's a very good question. Talk like a leader. And, and there's a lot of good, uh, a lot of good comment there. And I think anybody who's listened to other episodes here, you're going to hear, a lot of similar threads and what I really like is maybe phrased a different way so you can hear it differently. But the idea of the authenticity and trying to be situationally aware and trying to find your purpose and fulfill your purpose rather than have an authoritarian viewpoint or try to lord leadership over people. And I guess that whole mindset perspective. And I appreciate that you were talking more about uh, it sounded to me, what I was hearing is more how I think about how I'm talking or how I'm being when I'm talking more than what I'm doing when I'm talking. It, it's more the kind of state of being perspective, the, the habits, that mindset that you bring to communication that's really more important than the specific technique. And 
techniques can change on situations, but hopefully the heart and the, the spirit is uh, consistent through all situations. Yes. Yeah, you, you have to think things through, right? Yeah. You, just, you don't just go in blind. Oops, yeah. did it again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's more of reflecting on what, well, what, that, what does that person need? Right. right. Uh, Good. Not to lose my identity in it. Right. It's more of uh, you need to know before you show. Like you need to know where this person is coming from uh, so that I can say the same thing in a different way so that they can receive the information. Mm -hmm. uh, you've heard the story of me paying a compliment to my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the first time I paid a compliment, I paid a compliment as if it was me. And the effect was a very cold evening because uh, I didn't speak the proper language. Mm -hmm. That's poor leadership, right? I was not thinking about who's, who's going to be receiving this information. Right. Now, when the opportunity showed itself and I had an opportunity again uh, to, to pay a compliment, but, but this time I reflected on my audience. Who, who am I talking to? and was able to adapt my leadership style to that person's leadership style so that they can receive. And then it became very authentic. Mm -hmm. And it was a hot evening. And I yeah, was it like, was much better. Oh, wow, there's rewards. <laughs> I did not know. <laughs> wow. Well, like, wow. So if you can find the right way to deliver the message, things are better. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, everything's better. <laughs> and so I, I'm going to, I have to put a comma in our conversation here because I'm hoping we can continue this in, in future episodes. Um, I'm going to put a comma in it, not a period. We're going to come back and revisit this again because I'm, the challenge is I'm really enjoying the conversation and we could probably go for 40 minutes if we just let ourselves. Um, but what I want to really do is I want to make sure people know how to reach you, JJ. Uh, so what's the best way? We'll, we'll put a link on our podcast page also so it's easier for people, but please tell us. What's the easiest way for people to, to t get in touch with you and find out more about you? Uh, well, the simplest way would be to go to the website, theretiredspy.com, because there's always a contact link. Uh, an email would be sent to us if there's any questions. Okay. That's probably the, the easiest one. So www.theretiredspy.com. Easy to remember. Uh, theretiredspy.com. Excellent. Yeah. So I want to thank JJ for being with me today, and I hope that uh, – Everyone listening has uh, gotten some good insights out of it. I'm, I know JJ's reminded me of some things that I haven't thought about in a while. And so I really appreciate that. I think if you'll take what JJ said about authenticity, about adjusting to the, the person who's receiving the message, about being your authentic self, not losing yourself in the communication, and at the same time, adjusting yourself to better fit the person with whom you're communicating. I think if you do that and follow the, the ideas that JJ said and fulfill your purpose and your why, you can talk like a leader. This has been the Talk Like a Leader podcast. You can listen to this show every week wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Guy Harris, and thanks for listening.